In a continuation of a series of videos on LED strip, something he likes to call lead tape, today we're going to look at the drivers and we're going to be looking at the symbols on those drivers. Before I kick him in to tell us all those symbols, I'm going to take a little bit of slack off you, Gordon, and I'm going to go first. So, we're ready? Ready. There's Brace. plenty to choose from. I'm going with this one. This one here is a square within a square. That's a symbol for double insulated. Gordon, the rest of yours. Oh, well done. Yeah. Took the so difficult one. He's got his glasses on and knew it was going technical. All right, yeah. Well, do you know what a circle in a circle is? No. What is a circle within a circle? A circle is a reinforced insulation and it can be used inside something that's double insulated. Okay, so there you go. You're off and running. I've kicked you in. I've done the first one. They're all easy, the rest of them. There you go next. Well, let's start with a. Let's start with a probably one everybody knows and that's the CE mark. It's on everything from toys to LED drivers um, and that's a manufacturer's declaration that the product meets all known European regulations related to the product. Oh, so the manufacturer says their own product's really good, put that sticker on, is that what they're saying? Yeah, okay, poacher and gamekeeper in one, yeah the manufacturer says that. Is that possibly got a little bit of wiggle room in there. We see a lot of products from overseas and online retailers. Can anyone stick that sticker on their stuff? Well, let's just say the C mark perhaps is a little bit tarnished these days because, of the, yeah, there's a lot of probably product that has it on that may not have been fully tested at the laboratory. Okay, we're not suggesting this one isn't because we've got a lot of other symbols that back up the CE mark. Can you explain some of those to yeah, us? Yeah, so the one is, uh, the one probably looking at for Europe is this one here, the ENEC mark. Now that means it's been tested by an independent laboratory to meet all of those standards required for the European market. And we like that, so we're saying an independent person's taken that driver, checked it against the standards, bang, sticker goes on. Yeah, and, and that's a traceable yeah. standard. Yes, so it's, that's uh, good. It's there. And the, the little number next to it, so there's a 10 there, I mean, that, that will tell you what country it's been actually tested in as well. Oh, that's good. Does that continue on to any others? Uh, well, it is. Okay, we've got this. You know, these drivers, they look like an Egyptian tomb. There's that many symbols on here. But with a travel theme in mind, all of these are the ones it's been traveling around the world, picking up certification stamps from lots of different countries. So the Chinese version of CE is the three Cs. The Australian version is the CTIC. And then there's some more text-based ones here for India. And there's another for the Asian economic community there as well. And all of those symbols you just described there meant that in that country they were independently checked against the standards before that sticker or the symbol was given. Yeah, so it's either to their standards, they may differ slightly from Europe, um, but yeah, they've had the, that, that. I mean, possibly the glaring one missing is UL, which you'd expect for the US market. Okay. Um, but that's normally because their way of looking at things doesn't necessarily reflect the way things are done in Europe and the rest of the world at a much lower voltage. Okay. So here we go then. So that, that's took a that's took a big chunk out of the number of symbols you've got. So just while you've you've talked a lot now, I'll just I'm gonna I'm gonna do another one. Give yourself a little breather. Here we go, are you ready? This one here that looks like a wheelie bin with a cross through it means that you cannot, after life expectancy has expired, just chuck it in your standard recycling bin and you'll need to take it to a specialist to have it recycled. That one's mine. Carry on. Yeah, didn't realise we had such an expert on we in the eFix uh, community. <laughs> okay. Where are you going next, Gordon? Okay, so let's think the one that really the electrician installer should be uh, probably most useful to them, and it's this one here that looks like a top hat in a circle. That looks like a Lego character's head to me. Okay, you can have the Lego, the Lego person. Um, so that means this is an independent driver. So what, lives on its own? Yeah, essentially, you could, you could think of it that way. It can be used outside of a lighting fixture. Right, okay, so it can be used outside of a lighting fixture. Is there any other clues to suggest it also can be used outside of a lighting fixture? Okay, so you might want to put this, say, you've built a plastic cornice in a room, or you're going to put it in the ceiling. Yeah. What's important, you don't want to touch the terminals, and if you've got cables going, you don't want to be able to pull them out easily. So you'll see this driver has end caps and those end caps also function as cord grips as well. So that's quite an important symbol so that's the, the character that looks remarkably like a head of a Lego figure suggests that this can be outside the actual... Yeah and sometimes you'll see um, you, you know particularly the early days of LEDs people would just buy a normal power supply that was meant to be built into something and just throw it in the roof and you can go up there touch the terminals pull the ca cables out yeah not not brilliant. 
Okay, well, you're usually on a roll. I don't want to, don't want to slow you down. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so look at the next one here. We've got two M's. Okay. M and M. Yeah, nice chocolate treat. Yes. That's, that's, that's the Smarties. No, 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 no. The American uh, the, version of no, Smarties. Well, it's, I like the nut ones, so uh, yes. Okay, so what do two M's mean? Uh, so two M's, believe it or not, means it can be mounted on furniture. Right, okay, so I can take my driver and put it on the arm of a chair, or do we mean I build something like it to say be held in place with and we class that as furniture yeah well if you want to put it on the arm of your chair you can do that, that floats your boat but i'm suggesting it probably people might want to mount it in a you know bookcase or something like that or in a light box or something made of wood or other materials okay and that's the two m's okay that's new to me any other ones linked to that so the link to that is you'll see there's a number here there's 120 degrees in what looks like a giveaway sign okay and what um, does that mean? So that is the maximum temperature that this drive will get up to in worst case conditions. So say a fault. So perhaps you've short circuit the output. So if I get, create a piece of furniture to hold the driver, I've got to obviously make sure that that can withstand a minimum of 120 degrees and not internally combust, in other words. Yeah, exactly. And that number does, it changes by the driver. So, you know, some of these other drivers have one here at 110. Right. Yeah, it, it is different, so don't take the 120 degrees as the absolute maximum for them all. Is that your last moment talking about temperature? We've got some more stuff on temperature. So temperature, let's have a think. Well, you may remember if, if you've watched that, I hope you have, uh, we did a, a video about looking at temperature of LED tape, something he likes to call uh, lead strip. LED strip, whatever. Um, so the TC point, that's basically a temperature you don't want to exceed. And again, the manufacturer's given you a reference point for the driver to measure that. Okay. So. Is it affected by ambient temperature? Yeah, so along with the TC point, you'll also see ambient temperature. Right. So obviously there is a correlation, higher ambient, you'd expect that temperature to be higher, but this is more useful. So say you'd built an enclosure and you'd put lots of drivers in there, yeah. and you measured an ambient temperature of 40 degrees. Okay. Obviously, those drivers could be stacked up. The one at the top probably would be hotter than the one at the bottom. And therefore, we could have premature failure of the driver. You try and send it back to the manufacturer, and they might you know, replicate your enclosure and suggest that actually you'd, you'd gone beyond the temperature of the actual... Yeah, that's, ex that's exactly what they do. If you had lots of failures, they'd try and replicate what you've built. And yeah, if you go above that TC point, you'd, you'd struggle to win that, that argument. Is there any more on there that you can grab me off? Grab you off, let's have a think of this EL symbol. Okay, so that's, what's that gonna stand for? Oh, it's emergency lighting, Gary. It's actually relevant. The letters actually mean something. Okay, so emergency lighting. So that is, it can be connected to a DC power supply. So something you might see on the central battery system. Wow, do, do we get many of those on? I remember back, back in the day when I first started out, we had a, a battery storage room at the college I was at and they showed us that for the emergency lighting. Is that something very common in the UK? Well, that was before electronics, Gary. So times have moved on <laughs> since then. So no, in the UK, we mainly use self-contained emergency light with a Tupperware box on the roof. But in Europe, uh, central battery systems are still pretty popular. Okay, that's a good one to do. Uh, you're running out now, I think, are you? Uh, I think we've nearly exhausted. So we'll, we'll, there's Dali. Okay. So, Dali, a fan of Dali? Paint, impressionist painter? Yes, yes. Yeah. And what else could it mean there? <laughs> well, that's uh, obviously digital addri digitally addressable lighting interface, trips off the tongue. Um, we'll be looking at that in a later series of videos when we look at dimming. So, that's a, a way of dimming LEDs. Okay. Anything else in there, or we covered them all now? I think we're almost through on that one. Yeah. Okay, so as always, we love to hear people's comments, don't we, Gordon? So make sure you make those comments below. You might have come across a symbol that certainly I won't know. Maybe Gordon will, and maybe we can help you out with that. But again, as always, make sure you leave those comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.